in this recording or video for your Wednesday class. We're going to go over information that you need to know about suspensions and retardations. This is from chapter 10, and I'll show you where that is in the book. Then we'll jump ahead to chapter 13 and talk about extra information about five, seven chords and resolving them. Uh, this is a topic called the Virgin Seventh of the Chord. There's a new scenario or story where the prince doesn't step down. And I'll show you that. And finally, what if we want to take the five chord with a seventh on it and resolve to a six chord instead of a one chord? What do you do then? Okay. So um, to start with, suspensions and retardations. Suspensions are non chord tones that are entered by holding the note over. So by the same tone, in other words, and then stepping down for the suspension or stepping up for the retardation. I'm going to re angle my camera over to here, I guess. All right. So, and it shows us an example of that right here. Right, I'm on page 175, 175 in this edition. And it says, holds on to or suspends the chord tone after the other parts have moved on to the next chord and the suspension will eventually resolve down by step, okay? So they give us an example right here where presumably this is a C chord and my C is there on top and this is a, D, a G chord here. So this is like root and third and then fifth and third. C chord or G chord. And as it moves on, this note holds over, becomes a suspended note, and then resolves down. A retardation is exactly the same, except it would be when instead of stepping down, it resolves up. Okay. And you should know that by now. What you don't know is that the theorists want you to do one more level of analysis when you find one of these. And that is that they love to know the distance of. Uh, the note that is the non chord tone or suspension with the lowest note, and then when it resolves as well. Okay, so um, it, here's an example right here where you've got a B flat one chord right here in first inversion. There's my root, there's my third. We're stepping up, well, down actually into a seven chord right here. And this note does not move right away, it becomes suspended. When we have a suspension from now on, you don't just say, oh, suspension. You say suspension. And then you measure the interval that the suspended note is to the lowest note in your music at that moment, which in this case is the C, and that's a seven. So you'd mark it seven. And when it resolves down the step, six, right? From C to A as a sixth. So this is a, what we call seven, six suspension. We have other examples here as well. One going to a five chord. Here's my suspended note right there. When that happens before it resolves, you check and say, well, what's the distance from this note to the lowest note? And I know there's another octave in here, but you just simplify it if it's bigger than a 10th, okay? So F up to B flat is a four, four, and then steps down, three, four, three suspension. Here it is again. The C holds over and comes down. Check it against there. This is a ninth, okay? And then an eight or an octave, nine eight suspension. Now, the only other thing you need to know is that, well, maybe there's two things you need to know. What do you do if the suspension is in the base? Well, in that case, then, see, we have the one here, the B flat holds over as a suspended note while the chord changes and then resolves down by step, suspension. In that case, you measure it just against the next highest note up. So if your suspension is in a melodic base, then don't measure up to the top, just go, what's my next note? Oh, it's a two, and then it goes down three. So depending where it is, you might be collapsing by one number or you might be opening up by one number. There's actually another scenario where this note here could change to a different note before this resolves, and then you'd have a number for this and a strange looking number there as well. We'll see it when it happens, okay? I'm gonna show you an example that you can follow along with here. And we'll also segue us into the five, seven chord really nicely as well. So here I've got my, my C, G, E, B flat. This is my five, seven chord in F, right? I'm going to a one chord right here. And my seventh right there does not go down to the A immediately. It holds over and becomes a suspension. When that happens, we have to say, aha, we have a suspension. We have to label the numbers for this, okay? So we measure against the base note right here. And we can just collapse all these octaves. B flat is a fourth above F. 
So this is a four. And when it resolves to there, four, three, four, three suspension. Now, uh, before we go on, I'll just show you one other thing that it could be. Let's say we resolve to a one chord right here like this, and then it goes up to a one, six, four, like that right there, okay? Then um, this would still be a four right here, but then when we get to here, we look, you're no longer measuring to the original F note right there, you're measuring to this base note at that point. So this wouldn't be a four, three suspension anymore. It would weirdly look like a four, six suspension because this is a fourth from F up to B flat and these collapse in and C goes up a six to there. So rarely, but sometimes it does happen that between the time you get your suspension and measure right there, and your suspension resolves, your base note that you're measuring against also will change. So you'll get funny numbers there. I'd say 70% of the time, 75% of the time, it's just gonna be like a four, three suspension or a seven, six suspension or nine, eight suspension or something like that. Here's an example of the base suspension right here of a five chord in third inversion. There's my B flat right there. It holds over while the one chord arrives and then it resolves down. Now in this case, it's still a suspension right? We still have to identify that. But because it's in the base, we check it against that note right there. So this is a two right there. And when it gets to there, three suspension. And the same thing is true when we find retardations. I've just made only suspensions here. But retardations are just like suspensions, except they resolve up by step rather than down by step. Whenever you have suspensions or retardations, we have to label the interval at the point of the suspension and the point of the resolution, okay? And I'll remind you of that stuff again. Now, just uh, before we move on, this is a nice segue um, because we use the sevenths of the chords right here and suspended them over and then brought them down, which is nice because we're gonna talk about uh, five, seven chords right here. Let's see if I can angle this a little better. All right, five, seven chords. And the first thing is, we're just gonna jump into your textbook here and show you, these guys love this topic. It's crazy. So the first thing they're gonna talk about is, I'm on page 200, this chapter, what is it? Chapter 13, yeah. And they spend a lot of time talking about the approach to the seventh. They want you to categorize it. Like if you hold it over like we did in Resolve Down, then call it a suspended, figure of getting into the seventh. If you step down into it and step out of it, then they call it a passing tone figure. And this is a neighbor tone figure and a poggiatura figure. Um, sure, I mean, you can know this, I do, but uh, we that, you know, this is overclassification perhaps in a way. I think the most important thing to remember is that um, this one last thing, when used, when you leap into the seventh of a chord tone, right? Like the seventh of the chord, leap is almost always an ascending leap into it, rarely going down like that. That's the big piece of information. In some of your exercises, they're going to say, you know, how did you approach the seventh? And, and you wanna say, well, this is like a suspension. That's like a passing tone. That's like a neighbor tone. That's like an appoggiatura, but it's not that big a deal, okay? But do note, that if you're gonna jump into the seventh, like in a Pagiatura, we're not doing it from the top, we're jumping up into the seventh so that we can resolve back down, okay? So there's a little tidbit there. Now, there's a case of what happens when the prince doesn't step down. This gets into um, what do we do when we have some inverted chords, okay? So when you have not a five, seven, but a uh, five, six, five, or a five, four, three, or a five, two, that's third in base, fifth in base, seventh in base, right? Not, these are not the root in the base. What do we do? And the answer is we do same as always. We did this once in class. I'm gonna show you what this would look like. I'll draw one up on the pad real quick. And if you know your figurative story that we've been talking about, 
you just follow the rules. So let's say I have a five, two. I'll just put myself in the key of C so you can easily see this out, okay? That means that I have a G7 chord here with the F as the lowest note right there. So I'll put the F there and put the B there, put the G there and I'll put the D. Oops, wrong stem, the D right there, okay? G, B, D, F, all right? Just identify the characters and resolve them. So we find the tritone. There's my seventh right there in the, in the scale, which is third of the chord. There's my seventh of the chord, which is fa, okay? So princess, prince. This is the uncle, not the king, because it's not in the bass. And that's the queen right there, okay? Queen steps down. Uncle does nothing, right? Princess, just follow the standard story, not the runaway story right there. And Prince comes down like that. And that makes for a third in the bass, which is a one six. That's how you do it. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what inversion you have. You do the same thing. So let's do a five, six, five, still in the key of C. That means the third's in the bass. So I'm gonna put my B right there. I'll put the G right there. Or I'll put the F right there. And I'll put the, I'll just put the D in the middle like that. Okay. G, B, D, F. Uncle, princess, queen, and prince, right? There's no king here because there's no root position. No, that's the whole point of the inversions. So let's resolve this. Princess is going to step up, right? Uncle's going to do nothing. Queen is going to step down. And the prince is going to step down like that. When we root, root, third, fifth, it works. It's perfect, okay? Now, uh, so you can already do this. You, you can... You can resolve all your inverted chords. There are a couple tiny exceptions. Um, there's a big topic of what happens if this is not a one chord that we're going to. Like, what happens if it's a one with a seventh on it? What happens if, it, you know, like, what do we do? And, and we'll get into that as a bigger topic later. We will talk about what do we do when there's going five to six before we end this video. But for right now, let's just say you got yourself covered for 80 to 90% of the things, if you can identify the characters, even out of order, and just resolve them like we normally would, okay? So there's one scenario where the Prince character does not step down. Let me see if I can find it for you. It's uh, maybe making too much out of it, but still, you know, there you go. All right, so I'm over on page 211 in my book right there, okay? And it's this example right here. So sometimes, like if we had a five, four, three, then that means the queen's in the base right there. And she would step down and this is the uncle and he holds over and there's the princess and she steps up and there's the prince and he steps down, right? Okay. But sometimes your baseline is not want to go, not going to want to have this note always step down. Like in this scenario, going backwards, do, re, mi in the bass, as opposed to mi, re, do. We've forced the queen note right here, the fifth, to step up rather than step down, okay? So when you have a melodic bass that is taking you differently than the formula, which is in this case, queen steps down, fifth in the bass, right? Then she can step up and then you have two choices. One is where you resolve everything else the way you normally would. So queen steps up instead of steps down because melodic bass, uncle holds over, princess steps up, prince steps down. You get funny doubling, then you get a, you get a, a root, a third, a third, and a fifth, which is fine, it's totally okay. However, there, so you could think of it like, here's a scenario. Once in, in her life or something as an adult queen, she decides to not do what everybody expects her to do and she steps up rather than steps down. Okay, and everything else goes on. You get some funny results right here. There is one more sort of pseudo scenario, which is that, again, this is a one, two, three baseline here. Do, re, mi, right? Queen steps up because the melodic baseline makes her to do that. And at that point, look, uncle holds over, princess steps up. The prince can also step up in tandem with the queen and they make these really nice thirds or tenths right there that sound great together, moving up. Um, if you are listening to the piano part of Like a River, 
uh, that, that we're doing in choir this year, then you're hearing that sound. If you uh, know some old songs by Radio Play, they like to do that too. Uh, Beethoven did it too. It's great. So exception to just resolving everything normally. If your bass line is melodically taking you going one, two, three up, then your five, four, three, which is the queen in the bass, can't go down because that's what the bass line is not doing. It can't hear, right? So uh, in that case, it steps up, everything goes on as normal, you get slightly different results in the end, no big deal. But sometimes when this steps up in this scenario, then the prince note, the seventh, can follow suit and the two outside voices can parallel up together and it's a great sound. And we'll go over that and play sounds for you and, and have you recognize and hear these things when we meet uh, live on Zoom on Friday, okay? And let me just get back to my agenda to make sure we're, we're caught up on everything. Okay, last topic. What do you do if you have a five, seven and you wanna to go to a six chord? We haven't really talked about that, but you actually have all the information that you need already. So let me show you um, how you should think about it. And this will help you understand why you already know how to do this. If I had this here, I'll leave myself in the key of C here because you've been thinking there and it's easy to go. If I had G and G and B and G, no, right there, hold on. B, we'll put the B right there, D, G, B, D, G. Okay, so there's my five chord right there, right? And now we're going to six, okay? Then this would step up and this would be one of those things where you say like, aha, everything moves opposite the base, except this note right here has options because it's T, could go up, could go down, right? If it's in the top voice or in your minor, it has to go up. It's starting to sound very familiar to some other things that we've been doing, like locking the princess in the tower, okay? So let's just resolve this, everything moving opposite, okay? So this goes down, that goes down, um to there and that goes down to there right oops wrong note sorry getting ahead of myself just like that okay so a a c e right everything went opposite the base step the other possibility is that we could take this right here the third of the chord and because it's t we could move it upward right so it could go like this this could come down in unison right there in this particular case, and this would come down as well. And if we resolve T up to Do like that, a third of the chord, because it was in the soprano, because we're in minor, or because we just felt like it, because it's a tendency tone, we're allowed to do that. Then you end up with a root, a third, a third, and a fifth, which is fine actually, because that's the root of the key as well. So that's good. So what do we do if it's a five, seven? You do exactly the same thing. It's just your starting note is slightly different. Let me show you. I'm going to write exactly the same thing here, except I'm going to turn this into a 5-7. So here's my G right there. There's my B. Here's my D right now. Instead of uh, another root, I have that right there. OK, so root third, fifth, seven instead of root. We do it exactly the same way. That goes there. Everything else comes down opposite the base. It's just your intervals that you move on one of these notes will be different because it started out differently, but this B will still come down to the A, this D will still come down to the C, and this F, well, the G was coming down to the E, but now it'll just go fa me as opposed to so me. Actually sounds kind of cooler, right? And if we wanted to resolve T upwards, we can still do that too. So again, we have G, we have B, we have D, and an F, instead of the G. It's kind of a poorly written G, it looks like an F right there, okay? So again, five, seven, going to a six. This time we'll resolve T up, but everything else does the same thing. So we step to there, T goes up, all right. So there's my fifth right there. It's coming down opposite the base step, right? Like that. And then this one here will come down again by step rather than third here. So me, fa me, it's exactly the same. So as long as you know your formula, which is five to six is a step motion, everything moves opposite. Be careful, sometimes T has to go up or you can just do it by choice on certain occasions. You do the same thing, except instead of the doubled root right there, could be anywhere in the chord. 
by the way, in the voicing. We just did this so it would be easy to see. You start on the seventh. Still resolve it down. All right, let's go over this again. Suspensions, retardations. When you find them, you also have to name the interval of where it's suspended by measuring the suspension down to the base, right? And then when it resolves that note to the base note as well, okay? If it's in the base position, in other words, in the base voice, then you just measure up against the next note just above it, okay? Put those numbers in. Five, seven chords. Don't skip into the seventh from above the seventh. Otherwise, don't worry about what it says in the textbook, okay? Um, you just use the normal standard, whatever. Um, the, the, you know, the, the, the queen, the, the uncle, the prince, the princess, there will be no king, though, when you have inverted five, seven chords, you just do it the same, okay? There's one exception to that. That's when you're doing a five, four, three, that's queen in the bass, right? And you're going like, do, this is Ray and me, and the bass line is stepping up, forcing you to not resolve the queen stepping down. In that case, you can just resolve everything the same, or if you would like the sound of it, you can take the seventh of the chord, right? Which is fa, and also go up instead of down, right? And that's really nice sound, okay? Finally, five, seven, going to six. You just do it exactly like a five chord going to six, except instead of a double root, you'll have a seventh. All right, hope that's useful. Uh, make sure that you watch this video well enough that you understand each of these topics. There's no, no, um, there's nothing wrong with going back and watching parts again, okay? Make sure that you're there because on Friday, we'll take off and do exercises in these things. So watch this enough that you know what's going on with these topics, or you can ask a very specific question about something that needs explaining or another example done. All right, and I'll see you guys on Friday.